All right, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Henry Suarez. Um, I work for Residio, Honeywell Homes. And we're going to see uh, today an overview of the Vista 128 and 250 commercial panel, the BPT, FBPT panels. Uh, if you have any question and uh, when we're doing this training, <clears throat> I'm sorry, you can put your question in the chat, you know, write down your question, and then we will answer uh, as soon as we can, as soon as we see it. And also at the end of this presentation, I can put a, <clears throat> a slide that has a, that's a barcode for a survey. That's a residual survey about this training. Uh, the only thing you got to do as soon as I put up that survey barcode on the presentation, you just open your cameras on your phones. Uh, the one who has iPhone, you can take, do like a, you're going to take a picture. And it will ask you if you're going to open that on Safari. But if you guys have Android, it will ask you, you're going to open that on an app. You'll have to download the app real quick is, um, and do the survey. If not, if you guys already have an app for an app for barcode, you just scan the barcode, and then it will take you to a survey. <clears throat> I would really appreciate it. you guys can do do that survey for us. Okay, thank you very much for that. And we're gonna start with this training. Uh, how I mentioned before is a product overview of Vista One Twenty Eight Two Fifty commercial panels. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm a little bit sick. Okay, uh, all this sudden, why would be why Vista panel? There's a reason why Honeywell Vista Zeros are the security industry most widely used control panels all over the world. They provide you and your customer with more of what you both really want, like simplified installation, robust protection and innovative innovation, live, lifestyle enhancing features, including simplified operation and support for home and commercial automation and control. Also integrates intrusion, fire, uh, GSM or LTE communicators, a state of the art alarm communication, video and ham automation compatibility and flexible scalable systems. You can start from a smaller, uh, small system to a bigger system. Engineered to assembly, uh, integrated with Honeywell's full range of keypad, graphic, touchscreen, transmitters like wireless devices, wireless sensor, hardwire devices, hardwire sensors, and individual fire components such as smoke detectors, heat detectors. Um, also can give you the flexibility to create and customize solution at every stage of your customer's needs. Also, we provide you time and cost efficiency for installation, training system, programming, and inventory. <clears throat> We're going to take a look at some of the characteristics for uh, the 128 BPT and the 250 BPT panels. All right. Uh, the BPT is Tenfer Burglar, Burglar Panel Turbo. All right. They, hold, they have nine zones on the plate, excluding the 250. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, no, both have, uh, um, I'm sorry, nine zones on the plate, the BPT panel. Um, the 128 is a 128 zone, the 250 are two, 250 zones. If you're going to go wireless, you can expand to 128 wireless zones on the on the 128. 249 for the 250. If you're using the B-plex, then you will have to do, you will have, you're doing a 119 for the 128 on the B-plex pulling loop. We will talk about B-plex, don't worry. And on the 250, you have two, 241 B-plex zones. The 128 can have 150 user code and the 250 panel 250 user code. Uh, the log event capacity for each panel, for the 128 you have 512 or the 250 1000 event. Both of these panel have eight partitions, eight through partition. You can make one of them as a common partition. Also, you have one more partition, it's called partition 9. That partition 9 is only to view the state of the all other eight partitions, okay? They cannot assign any zone to that partition 9. That as partition 9 is just to view the state of the other partitions. <clears throat> uh, all of them have a master keyboard that will allow you to visualize uh, all your partition. That's what I was playing before, the master uh, partition 9. Has a capacity of 31 alphanumeric keypad and 6 touchscreen or graphic keypads. You can span up to 96 programmable output or relays. This Turbo panel, the T, 
Stanford Turbo that because they have a one integrated one RS two thirty type uh, one RS two thirty two port of integration <clears throat> that could be for Winpack or ProWatch or third party vendors. Not all of them. We have a list we are compatible to. <clears throat> Looking here on the characteristics for the one twenty eight FBPT and two fifty FBPT. FVPT stands for a fire, fire burglar panel turbo, okay? Almost the same capacities, right? Um, uh, same user code as the was for the VPT, but in this one have only eight zones on the plate. The VPT have nine zones on the plate, all right? Uh, you can have the same uh, uh, on the same partition, the capacity of 31 keypads, six graphics, you can program an 86 output relay, and you have the T for Turbo. That it means you have one integrated one RS port at 232 port for integration options. Okay. <coughs> Looking here, the more characteristics for the 250 uh, FBPT panel as a two zone for two wire smooth detector, conventional two wire smooth detector will be zone one and zone two. Support 16 two wires from detector each zone. You're talking about now 32 smoke detector, two wires, okay? Uh, you have a relay on the board for reset of four wires smoke detector. You can do something else with that relay, a relay on board on the panel. Uh, you got two NACs, two bells. It's called NAC notifi notification appliance circuit, uh, bell one, bell two for the FVPT panel. It will support addressable B plug smooth detector with the maintenance notifications. Have the ability to report to high and low sensitivity of the detectors, support commercial wireless fires and intrusion devices. The wireless suspension are US list, UL listed. Uh, the resection of signals supervised by the panel. And you can have a local printer option to print the log events. Also support areas with carbon monoxide detectors. <coughs> I'm sorry. Looking here a little bit on this chart, where you can take a look on the 128 VPT, 250 VPT, 32. That's also a fire commercial panel, uh, 32 FVPT, but it's a smaller, smaller commercial panel. Is the capacity? You do take a look here at the difference. The capacity have only 32 zones, you got eight zones on the panel. You can span up to 32. You're gonna do a fire panel, uh, something small like 20 zone, 28 zone. You don't have to go to the 128. You can just get the 32 FVPT. It's programmed the same way, almost the same features. Support all those keypad, 31 alpha number keypad, six graphic, but they only have two partitions. All right. They only have two partitions. Doesn't have a partition like the 128 and the 250 panel. Okay. Um. Yeah. That's here in this chart right here. On the communication pad of contact ID and express for all of them. Um, all of them can have 96 um, output, programmable output. Uh, this panel also can have uh, something that we have a module for. This panel is called Vista Key. Okay, you control some eight doors, access control doors, and uh, on the B 250, 15 doors, and the 32, eight doors. All right, but that's a Vista Key that's not only for, uh, connected to the Bplex pulling loop, and is only for this uh, commercial panels. Um, now, none of them support panel linking. Long time ago with us, now we don't support that anymore. Um, you have all the panels that end with the T. They, for example, 128 VPT or FVPT. That means the, ten, the T is Stanford Turbo. That means those panels have a um, onboard serial port, okay? <coughs> the RS-232 port. All of these panels support to connect 2.0. Um, you can program the system through the keypad as well. Um, uh, as supervise the phone line monitor and comply with all this UL, ULC, and ORD. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. We're going to talk about a little bit about the VPLEX. Um, sometime I mentioned VPLEX at the beginning of the presentation. VPLEX is a uh, is the pattern pooling loop technology that literally define prices and performance on a simpler pair of wires, okay? Because by using two wires instead of four, Bplex offers significant advantage over home run wiring or the conventional four wire multiplex, okay? Providing economical expansion of peripheral devices 
and point identification to your central monitoring station. <clears throat> what I'm saying about this is on the BPL look on the BPLX technology, you don't need to run two wires for power and two wires for data over the zone. Only coming out of the BPLX connection, you'll almost uh, your last almost last two terminals on the panel. Um, that come the two wires have data and power. Okay, so if you're using a BPLX um, motion detector, those devices only have connection for two wires because a BPLX device. So with the two wires, you can you bring into the device, <clears throat> sorry, power and data. And when you're programming the device, um, it's going to program by a serial number. And that serial number is the ident identification point. Okay. <clears throat> Some benefit that you have about the BPLEX. Um, let me see. Okay. Some uh, benefit that you have about the BPLEX will reduce costs since each BPLEX sensor can be installed using two wires for power and data. Including existing wire, in many cases, costs are sustainably uh, reduced. It will reduce power consumption due to because uh, BPLEX devices uh, draw minimum amount of current and minimize the need for auxiliary power supplies. Um, fast and accurate identification and response due to point ID allows you to quickly and easily pinpoint the search of the alarm or trouble from the keypad and communicate the information to the proper authorities and let you bypass uh, protection to any specific point. We we'll reduce time and labor due to uh, uh, the speedless technology offer a label on time saving maintenance feature that gives you the ability to diagnose a pinpoint defects. As a result, the installation and services professional can arrive at the site already knowing the exact location of the problem. Service call can, beca can become much more efficient saving you the time and labor costs associated with their repeat visits. <clears throat> Here um, I'm mentioning that this reduced maintenance costs, uh, B plus can initiate functional smoke detector testing from a Vista 32FV or a Vista 128 or 250. Serious system keep it automatically, we can log the results locally and send them to the monitoring center. This dashboard could reduce system maintenance costs when annual tests or inspections are performed. Honeywell VPS BPLEX addressable technology offers many new and exciting innovation while fully supporting existing addressable loop products. You will experience efficiency and, in and installation and reliability that will add up quickly on your bottom line. Okay. <clears throat> Talking about here some devices, uh, accessory and expander that you can use on the commercial panel that have a uh, pulling loop uh, uh, features like the Biplex pulling loop. On um, here you have on the top 128 and 250. Also you can use on the 32 panel. Uh, you got the zone expanders, a 4208SN. This is a zone expander. Um, you got the 4208SNF, another zone expander, the 4208U. And 4209U, this is very old, it's stopped being um, compatible it's because we don't do this anymore, but if you guys have it, still have it on site, it's going to work, okay? You got uh, another uh, sound expander right here, it's 4290SN Bplex with uh, two sound expander. Uh, you have the 4183. Uh, 4293, and you got this tension power for your pulling loop that 4297 uh, loop standard module. <clears throat> Why loop standard module? Because you have a current that you can use on the panels. The panel will give you on the pulling loop 128 milliamp. We will talk about that, that a little bit on another slide. And it's recommended only to use 64 milliamps. So each device that you use, uh, that you will use on site will draw some milliamp, okay? So when you're gonna reach those 64 milliamp, what you gotta do is install that 4297 to give you out one, to give you more milliamp. We'll give you another 100, <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> I'm sorry. We'll give you another, another one, 128 milliamps. But we're gonna talk about that a little bit on another slide. This was the module that was used before for panel linking. We don't do this anymore. We don't have this module anymore. <coughs> we don't have this module anymore, I'm sorry. And this is some ad additional accessories like uh, power supply, auxiliary power supply, 
And we got the ECP ISO, the isolator module for the EC for your ECP devices. Okay. Other accessories to the peripheral that we have, you have uh, motion detectors. You can take a look here of devices like this that end with S N. It means those are zero number devices for the pooling loop. All right. So you got motion detectors, overhead door contacts, uh, con regular contact, resets, resets contact, um, two zone uh, remote point module. This is an expander. You got glass break, a VPLEX glass break. Um, <clears throat> uh, other sound expander. You have a, uh, a relay uh, with a one zone expander with a relay, one relay. Okay, this is more accessories that you can use for your pulling loop for your Bplex devices. <clears throat> Looking here at the keypads, all right. We get keypads like a uh, fixed English keypad, like the 6150, 6150V, that means it has a voice feature. You got the 6150RF, that means that keypad have a wireless receiver embedded with it, and you only can use 16 wireless zones in the panel and behave as a medium receiver. Uh, you got the the wireless keypad like the 5828 and the 5828V because uh, the V stand stand for voice have that feature of voice keypad. <clears throat> you got custom alpha keypad like alpha numeric keypad like the 6160, 6160V, the 6160RF. This is a keypad that uh, has a um, includes a wireless receiver is embedded to the receiver. And it will be here as a high receiver, okay? So it will support the wireless zone that the panel supports. You got the 6164 US is a sound expander key, is a keypad with a sound expander and a relay embedded to it, all right? But that sound expander that you have in this keypad, it will behave, it will be like a sound expander 4219 or 4229. That sound expander is compatible with the lower panel, like the 20P, 21IP, 40LA panels. All right, but this keypad it is compatible with the 120 and 250 panel. You can use the sound expander not to add zones, but only to use the relay. Okay, but not the zone. The sound expander size is gonna work. It have to be the Bplex uh, devices. This this is not. All right. <clears throat> uh, looking here, more keypad, more of. Keypad or family keypad. We have the custom premium design keypad, like the 6460 S&W, Stanford Silver and White. We got a slime keypad portrait style. We got the fire commercial keypad, the 6160ZR2. This is a UL A64 listing keypad. If you're doing a fire installation using the 128 FBPT or 250 FBPT panel, you will need to go to go with UL standard A64 and FBA72, you will need your 6160CR2 keypad, a red keypad with your LED for alarm trouble supervisories and silence and all those goodies for our fire alarm systems. You got your keypad, uh, touchscreen keypad, like the 6280 white and 6280 S for silver. And you have your touchscreen tuxedo Wi Fi keypad, all right? This is how you can integrate your Wi-Fi and automation devices like C-Wave controls, all right? Through, through your uh, Tux Cedo Wi-Fi keypad, you have we have it on white and silver. More accessories. So uh, we have the um, wireless receivers. Um, the part number is 5881. We have uh, L, M, and H. They stand for low, medium, and high that have to do with the zones, all right? You got the L, that means it will support eight wireless zone. You got the one with uh, the N on M, that means you only can support up to 16 wireless zone. If you have the H, that would depend on the panel. If the panel support 240 wireless zone, then it will give you all your wireless zones. You have more receivers right here, like the commercial receiver, 5881 ENHZ. This is a commercial wireless receiver, UL and it will behave as a high receiver. And you have the 5883 high security transceiver module. That's for the, you to be able to be compatible with the bi-directional devices like wireless keypad, wireless relays, wireless sirens. And you have your 1500RP, the wireless repeater. The repeater um, 
it would repeat only the signal from the receiver, not from another repeater. Okay. Looking here our wireless devices, you have several wireless devices for door and window transmitter and for light safety option. We have uh, door slim, smaller, you got make wrap, recess contact, uh, chuck sensors, uh, you got uh, transmitter for outdoor, for temperature and flood detector, for overhead doors, tilt sensors. Uh, you got for light safety option, you got smooth detector, heat detector, smooth like heat combo. You got carbon monoxide. Um, and this is no wireless, this is the wireless siren, 1500 wave. This is just hardwire siren, okay. <laughs> On the space protection, you have a smaller shock sensor, motion detectors, all right. Um, you have also um, for indoor access protection sensor, outdoor motion detectors. Uh, for remote controls or personal emergency response, you have the uh, key fob for four buttons or one button or two button with accessories like pendants or or clip to put on your belt or to put on your or, uh, accessories like a watch band. You can put it as a watch, the pendant. You have the garage, uh, garage control kit, the 5877 GDPK, all right? Just talking about this two guys right here, the wireless sensor. This is the most selling transmitter in the worldwide are the 5814 ultra small door window transmitter and the 5816 door window transmitter. Okay. Um the 5814 is uh provide the perfect solution for difficult reaches to reach places and application where statics uh, um are small sizes are, are important. Uh, it's ideal for uh, doors and windows. <clears throat> on the 5816, you have a two-door transmitter uh, with a, with both built-in magnetic read switch and a wire closed circuit to contact loop. All right, this could come as a uh, brown or white. The ca the case. We're looking here at the sirens. You have self-contained electronic siren. Um, the wireless siren will be the 1500 wave. And we got indoor siren like the wave two two tone sirens and the 748 outdoor siren, extremely loud, is 119 dB. All right. There's a chart that way you can do on the panels. Uh, don't take a look at the the panel linking. We have to take this out of here. The panel linking. We don't do that on support anymore. Or panel do not support panel linking anymore. So what you can see in the pony loop, you can have all your devices. You can have your printer. You can have your keypad. Your Plex uh, expansion and then from out of there coming now for just smooth detectors. Uh, you can have your wireless zone, wireless re your recessed. Um, you can do a very big uh, panel, right? Talking more here about characteristics on the panel, your user codes on the 128 was 100 and, um, 150 user and on the 250, 250 user codes. All of them as four digit user code. A seven authority level, uh, all that keypad programmable. You can do it through the keypad. And the, all of them can do, you have the feature of global arming, and also can do open and close report by user numbers. All right. On the peripheral, you have uh, up to 31 addressable devices, okay, such as keypad, receiver, uh, modules, long range radio, all our net long range radios. Um, all, all, all of these are enabled in Fusion 93 on programming mode, device programming, and also can be programmed for supervision of modules and keypads. All right. Um, oh, on the keypad wire run, you gotta always have a. We have tables that if you're gonna do uh, connections. Uh, with the 22 gauge, you cannot exceed 450 feet. It's going to be 16 gauge, then cannot exceed 1,750 feet. We are limit from the ACP and the connection that you have to guide through. You have to guide yourself through that, all right? On the event logs on the 128, um, um, you can have on to up to 512 event on the 250, 1,000 event, and they will go on to all these six categories. This is how it's gonna come um, come in first, like alarm, supervisory checks, bypass, open and close report, system test. All right. 
on this field of programming, the field 5, the system event notify if enabled will cause all fault and restore it also to be logged in the event log. Okay. You can view the event to the alpha keypad or touchscreen keypad, or you can print it them dynamically or on demand to the serial printer. Also, you can upload the event log to the software compass. What's the software compass? So compass is the software that you can use to program the panel remotely or do a direct connect. Okay. Due to the panel tool have a RS232 port, you can do it through the Turbo interface, or the panel also have a port, uh, a pin connection for you can you will need the cable and all that, all the goodies to be able to connect it to your computer and have the software compass to do direct connect and do your programming through the software. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that's what I was talking about. An additional feature. You can do upload download through the panel through all the net communicators or via the ECP bus. Um, via through the ECP also, you can do a direct connect um, through with the, using the module for 100SM module. And the one have a turbo panel, you can do uh, straight to the turbo panels, all right? Uh, also, the ability has to uh, have the ability to send a 24-hour dialer test over all net devices. In addition to the dialer, this has been added. You can do it to the Allonet or Allonet communicators. Okay, this is selected by enabling the test category to be sent over Allonet devices on field 58, where you says who's going to be the primary subscriber and 59 the secondary subscriber. And those are the field number to program. A new code ID reporting code of 912 will be sent upon the silence of a fire alarm condition. This cannot be disabled. Okay. I mentioned before on the outputs, you can have up to 96 uh, programmable output, and they're available using a 4204 relay or 4204ZF or a 4101 SM Plex relay module. Okay, from those are VORM Z outputs programmable by system event, time schedule, alarm activation, trouble supervisory, or for a four wire smoke detector reset. reset on an individual zone operation, okay? Uh, you can also manually activate the relays that you map on, um, on the panel through the manually activating through the code and pound 70 or pound 77 mode. <laughs> Taking a look here of the relay, the relay is the 4204 relay module. It's a uh, half four relay that can be uh, mapped and defined individually. This go connected to the ECP bus, and you also have a table of address that you need to uh, set the address on the device. And then on field 93 of the panel programming, you will uh, enable this relay. Okay. This is a 4204ZF. It's an R relay, exactly the same as a 4204, but it's only only have one NAC output that can be used for UL commercial fire system. Okay. You have three relays right here, and you can use the other one for the uh, for the next circuit. Okay. You have another relay like the 4101 SN module. This is a, a relay that goes connected to the pulley loop. The other two relays, the 4204 on CF and the 4204, they go connected in the ECP bus. So what's the ECP bus? Enhanced communication protocol. That's where you connect the keypad. Okay. Where you connect the keypad, where you connect the relay as well. This relay, the 4204. But this one right here, this baby, the 4201SN module, this go connected to the pulling loop. All right. This go connected to the pulling loop, but will give you one zone and also will give you one relay. Okay. The communication format supported by the panels are Adenco Counter ID, Adenco 10 digit Counter ID, and Four plus two at the Encoder Express. Okay. All phone lines, boys or IP, are not compatible with Honeywell panels. All right. If all the net communicators are not compatible with, if the alarm communication are not compatible with boys or IP, so you will have to go to use an all the net device, all the net communicator, or third party that will be up to you. Uh, to make it that I uh, work properly because some third party communication they behave as a phone line and you gotta be aware of what you're doing your programming to make sure it's gonna send signal to that third party communicator. But the phone lines uh, that are voice over IP are not compatible with Honeywell panels, all right? 
because they will give you the wrong contact ID format. Sometimes it's gonna send the signal, sometimes it's not gonna send signal because they're not stable lines. All right. I'm sorry. This is a letter that was sent a long time ago to all users about letting you know about that. All right, so have it in mind. All right, this looking here the keypad the 6160CR2 commercial alpha keypad. Um, the keypad support additional LED indicator for conditions that are required to be uniquely displayed for a fire alarm system, like um, power alarm, silence, trouble on fire and super, on fire supervisories. Okay, when soon as you have a condition of your fire alarm system, like on the 128 FBPT panel or 250 FBPT panel, if you have a fire alarm on premises, this LED light for fire alarm should be on. That's why you have this all LED, those all those all LEDs for the panel for the keypad right here. All right, this is the ECP module for fire and intrusion isolation. Basically, if uh, you're gonna have a system that you're sharing fire devices, fire keypad, and fire pan, um, and burglar device, so you will install one of those guys right here to uh, divide your ECP devices. The one that is gonna go intrusion. I'm gonna go to this guy right here, the intrusion devices, and the one that I'm gonna go, uh, the one that are fire, I'm gonna go connect this straight to the panel, okay? Um, basically, this is where you have supposed to have a mount, right there next to on the board, have a little clip for you to put on next on the can of the panel. And this will be your their connection. They connect to the ECP isolator. You can refine this, you can see this illustration. Do you see the ECP isolator right here? Go connect it to the panel, panel ECP connection. And from here, you will go to your burglar devices. But your fire devices are go straight to the panel, okay? This is to isolate your intrusion devices from your fire devices. <clears throat> Talking a little bit here about the external sounders you have on the panel two bell output on the FBPT, okay? On the BPT, you only have one output. For the FBPT, you have two bell output. Each uh, bell circuit is radio for special application for fires at 10 to uh, 14 volt DC, 1.7 amp. The turn line current draw from the power one and power two and pulley loop bells, mean bell one and bell two, cannot exceed 2.3 amp for battery independent operation, okay? Panels are enabled for bell supervision by default. On um, when you have any fault on the troll on the bell circuit, I'm gonna report as a zone like zone 970 for bell one, 971 for bell two. Okay, as normal with a uh, zone type 19 for 24 hour troubles. <clears throat> this is a PS24, a power supply for when you're gonna add, uh, if you need to add the northern NAC circuit, you can add the PS24 power supply. Okay. Uh, this product cannot be used as a power 24 to initiating devices, only for next circuit, as a notify appliance, appliance circuit, okay? <coughs> I'm sorry. On the pulley loop, the BPX pulley loop, terminal connection 28 and 29, uh, you can see there's only two connections, all right? You can have, a, you can make a, up to eight loops, Okay, I would recommend on your loop each loop to have a 4297, the span uh, span power module. Um, I will take um, those two wires, uh, data and power, uh, low current devices directly on the loop. Home ROM is not necessary. Those devices have individual individual point ID. Um, how I mentioned before, has a 28 milliamp available from the control panel. Multiple loops can be rammed on a twister pair is required, okay? <clears throat> um, the B-plex loop bus is used to communicate with the 42OA as an FS as a sound expander module other than b devices. I communicate through multi-plexing. Uh, the maximum v plus current from terminals 28 and 29, how I explained before, how I mentioned, how you saw this in this. Uh, slide terminal 20 and 29 is 128 milliamps. Okay, and each sound expander can take up to 64 milliamp. All right, so there's some connection that has to be done, some power has to be implied to the expander 
to draw less milliamp, and when you're going to exceed those 64 milliamp, you need to add that 4297 expander span, module. Okay. <clears throat> you guys can take a picture of this, uh, or I don't know how maybe this the stream will be uh, recorded and you guys can view it later on. And also, uh, um, Camilla will send you to have the presentation by PDF, so you can have this as well. This is a wide limitation on the B plus, a consideration on the B plus devices by the milliamp that we've been drawn or been used and the wire LAN and the wire gauge. Okay? You need to have this in mind when you're gonna do a B plus installation, all right. Um this is a more on the consideration. You can use um twisted or stranded non shielded cables required. Should the cable or full metal conduct will increase the capacitance of the wires run, which limit the distance. Avoid running the cable near a keypad wiring intercom and AC power lines. Avoid, avoid also sharp bends in the wires when you do some bends, trying to do something nice when you're running the wire. Um, Observe the device and control requirement on certain number versus dip switch mode. You always, always when you're doing programming and using serial devices, people's devices always, if they are serial, need to be serial. All right. This is the 4297, the uh, Bplex standard module that will give you another 128 28 milliamps. All right. Also can work as a short isolator as well. Um, Here's their connection. You have the power. You need to power. You need to give power to these guys right here. It's time no power, not from the panel. Um, <clears throat> can be a 16.5 uh, uh, back uh, transformer or uh, DC power. Also, this is your connection for your pulling loop. You go from the panel here, and then you go to your other device on terminal nine and eight. Just a limitation for a thorough wire uh, using when you have a 4297 pulling loop standards. The summary of the wire ramp tied directly to the control panel and anyone a standard cannot exceed 12,000 feet for non shielded wire or 6,000 feet for wire that is shielded on a full conduit. It will reduce if you use shield the wire. If you see multiply, multiply standard, the panel only see the low of the standard with the most wire on it. For example, if the control panel has 4,000 of wire connected directly to it, each stand, extender may have up to 8,000 connected to it. So, right. <clears throat> the pulling loop is limited by the current capability. Okay, if the Vista 32F BPT is limited to 128 milliamp available for the pulling loop. Also the 128 and the 250 as well. The combined current of all devices connected directly to the panel must not exceed this rating, 128 milliamp. Uh, UL is recommend only to use 64 milliamp of the panel. If you're going to exceed that, that's why you have to add a 4297, okay, and a standard power, okay? Also, we'll give you another total of 128 milliamp, but per UL, you cannot exceed that. You cannot go to that 128. It's recommended only to use 64 milliamp, all right? Each 4297 must be run back to the control panel, not through another 4297, okay? That's why it will be doing it uh, per loop. If you're gonna have a different loop, like a uh, six, seven loop, it will have to be done through from an, uh, from if you, like this example right here. You have the control panel right here, you have one loop and you have a second loop. From my first loop, I'm installing a 4297. On my second loop, I'm adding another 4297. That is giving me more uh, current, okay, from my devices. <clears throat> Um, I mentioned that the 4297 also is an isolated module, uh, but also we have a short isolated module, it's called the VSI, okay? Also this guy um, can consume uh, 128, 1.2 milliamp when the LED is off, and 5 milliamp when the LED is on, all right? You can put this module between your devices so that way your short 
uh, when you have a short, you happen to have a short or one device getting short, it will step, stop that short right there. It's not going to let, let it go through the whole pulling loop, okay? So you can avoid multiple damage on your pulling loop. This is a, 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 an explanation of how you, know, you can install the Bplex VSI. I always recommend when you're going to do uh, multiple devices like um, intrusion and fire, have the intrusion devices in one loop, fire device in another loop, okay? And you see how we have here in the middle a BSI module. So that way you have a short one of these devices and they're going to go through to the panel. So that way it's not going to damage your other devices as well. The B-plex zones, right? On addition to the hardware zone, you can be added using the RPM, the repoint, remote point modules like Sun Expanders. Uh, the module can be serial or dip switch accessible, but if the modules can be serial, must be zero. Okay, if, if any pulling loop device, any pulling loop expansion module, expander module, um, Sun Expander can be serial, have to be serial when you're programming the device. <clears throat> um, this is the definition on some Bplex moves more common devices. The 4101 SN is a single zone with a relay. The 42A is an A zone zone expanders. 42A SN is a um, <clears throat> A zone zone expander and is a serial number device, so it's supposed to be zero. 42A is an SNF is an A zone expander with the one universal class 8 uh, zone. 4190 is a two zone expander module. 4183, two zone zero interface module, UL list of fire. 4297 is a pulling loop booster isolator module. And the BPLEX BSI is a, a short isolator module. Okay. This is right here your 4208U. Expansion module um, it's on expander. You have eight loops right here, and it's supervised by a take and resistor. Okay. If you um, do not add a power supply to the panel, this device, the 4208, is going to consume 20.73 milliamp. All right. And you're only going to have available to use 40.3 milliamp. But if you power up this baby, I uh, we recommend not do it from the panel. You have your power supply independent, independent to the device. Um, it's only going to consume 0 0.6 milliamp, so you're going to have available to use 63.4 milliamp. Okay. <clears throat> you have a table for you to put the dip switches. How are you going to? Uh, how depend you put your dip switches? How your zone is going to take a zero number? Okay. I'm going to take a zone number. It's going to take a zero number. But you will program a, as a zone. Okay. I'm sorry. This is 42A as N. Uh, the same as a 42A U. All right. Um, if you do not connect power to, it's going to consume more milliamp and you're going to have less milliamp available. If you put power to it as a 42A U, it's going to consume only 0 0.6 milliamp, and you will have 63.4 milliamp available to use. They have two tables because this is not for you to be used as a zone. It's only as a zero number. Table one and table two. So this is the prefix and the stream number that it will take when you're programming one of the zones. All right? This right here, those terminals 1 through 12, that's how you uh, normally we know a zone. They're no, they're known as loop, A B C D E F G H. Okay, <clears throat> and you have here when if you put all the switches on, you're telling the panel that all those loop like A B C are gonna take this prefix and this number. So this is the serial number for that zone. All right. Have an individual point identification number. This is your table two. All right, the intellectual instruction. The, all the devices come with this with the intellectual instruction. This is a 42A SNF. SNF. Of the different that you can have a class A zone right here. The last two loops. All right. 
the same if you do not power this up uh it's gonna draw more milliamp you're gonna have less milliamp to use if you power up you're gonna have uh more milliamps available it's gonna consume less milliamps all right also I have with the settings uh come with intellectual instruction for you to add your to set your dip switches to see how they're gonna start the loops okay you got the 4190 SN modules, uh, uh, two zones right here, uh, two zones on expanders, okay? You got the 4193 is uh, for fire listed devices. Uh, it's a uh, two loop. You can use uh, loop one supervised with a 10K resistor or unsupervised, or you have the green wire that is for uh, loop two unsupervised, okay? The 4101 SN module uh, as the zone uh, a relay VPLEX relay with a zone expander only have one relay to it and one zone. Okay, you got this most common smooth detector that is connected straight to the pulling loop, the 5193 SDO SDT. Okay, this panel is the um, commercial panel. A support up to two wireless receiver all right have to be the same model all right and if you're using if it's required for you to have a commercial receiver you can use a 5081 enhz uh, he has a front and a back tamper switch we're going to talk a little bit here on the if you're doing on a fire installation uh, wireless uh, devices installation there's some recommendation of what to do guidelines what to do properly all right you must install the receiver high the wireless receiver as high as possible check for building construction must home run the, the wireless receiver check the direct LED for possible RF interference only use antennas provide and make sure they are not bent or pointing a straight up uh or pointing it straight up or down are not near the metal okay um more thing that you must do is test all wireless transmitter with a feature called go no go test mode all honeywell panel have this feature i recommend 10 trips per transmitter in a questionable environment mount transmitter vertically some devices are requ required to be horizontal like smooth detector and heat detector you must test the device again after final uh, after the transmitter is in his final place for install installment. Uh, make sure batteries are set properly and fully charged. In run transmitter as input type or RF whenever possible. That's excluding the button wireless button wireless key fobs. This is a guideline for one not to do what uh, installation guideline not to do. Okay. You do not install transmitter on a full back wallpaper. Or do not install transmitter on metal windows or door frames. Do not install transmitter on receiver with large mirror or in the reception pad. Do not install equipment where temperature is 6 to 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or drop 32 Fahrenheit. Do not place equipment in a wet environment with 95% in relative humidity. Um, also, do not mount a uh, wireless transmitter extremely close to the receiver. It will not work, okay? Do not place receiver close to the 10 feet from a keypad or a pulling loop device or a pulling loop panel, I'm sorry, like this, this, this panel, commercial panel or a pulling loop panel. Do not enroll transmitter with incorrect input time. If it is RF, UR, or BR, you got to make sure you have your uh, input type available or correct. Do not enroll a transmitter by activating the tamper switch unless the instruction specifically state or tell you to do so. And in most cases, if you do that, that is going to learn the ROM loop number, okay? The 5081 wireless receiver, uh, you can set to the address 137. How I said before, this panel can take up to two receivers, have to be the same receivers, okay? The repeaters will receive an uh, alarm status and control message from the 1500 devices and then forward to, and repeat all well, those are mission to the panel receiver. I was playing before, you, the repeater will repeat the signal from the receiver. 
All right, and I'm gonna talk to another repeater. Okay, um, this uh repeater you can have how many you want on the panel, but if you enable the zones to be supervised, right? This repeater have four zones. You either do it by four zone or one zone, or you don't enable any zone. If you don't enable any zone, it's not gonna take any zone in the panel, and you can put uh, how, how many as you need. All right, but remember that the repeater is gonna talk to our receiver. But if you're gonna supervise the receiver, the repeater, if you do it by only one zone, and you have any type of trouble in the repeater, like a low battery or AC loss or a jam, is gonna come as a low battery. So if you're gonna supervise, it's recommended to supervise by the four zones, because one zone is gonna be for the tamper, another one for the AC loss, another one for low battery, and another one for, and another zone for the jam. So if you have any of those issues coming into the repeater, if you enable all the zones for their repeater, then the fault it will come with the zone that was programmed. Okay. On the wireless zone, our RF zone, uh, you can use any zone except the zone 64. Due to the zone 64, is reserved for a wireless keypad. How I mentioned before, you can use two wireless receiver, but gotta be the same model. Okay. Receive a supervisory zone, the panel will check for device every 45 seconds, okay? And zone 99 and 988 are used to supervise their receivers. The 1500 transmitter have a seven digit serial number that must be entered via programming, okay? You can, when you program the wireless devices, you can program and do it manually and put in the, um, the seven digit serial number or by activating the device. You must enter the transmitting input type correctly, like supervised or unsupervised, or if it is a key fob, gotta be a BR. This is our uh, fire and CO transmitter, uh, wireless devices like smoke detector, um, carbon monoxide heat detector combo, or the contact is uh, for commercial built commercial devices like the 5816CB. You have here um, a side uh, on a a sheet that has an Excel where you can use to calculate your power, do your calculation, your current and power on your installation. For example, if you're gonna have a, you can you're gonna have a big battery on the panel that can be determined by this site. You will enter all the devices that you have and it will tell you what kind of battery you can use. Okay. With this, we gotta get to the end of this presentation. I don't know if someone have any questions. If you guys have any question, please uh, let me know. You can put it on the chat. In the meantime, I'm gonna put the survey. Okay, so you guys can scan the survey and fill it up for us, please. So that way you guys can do the survey. Please, I appreciate that if you guys can do the survey for us. Um, remember, you just if you have an iPhone, you just open your camera and do it. Like you're gonna take a picture. As soon as you have that on your barcode, it's gonna open if you wanna open that in Safari. Okay. And you open it on Safari and it will take you to the survey. If you have a, an Android, you can use your barcode app or and it will take you, it will ask you if you wanna open that on the app, it will download the app and it will take you to the survey, okay?